How's it guys and welcome to the most basic ECG lecture ever. So this is a three part series. Part one we will be doing just how to read a normal sinus rhythm. So that's just a normal ECG from like knowing nothing to being able to read a normal ECG. Then two we're going to be talking about blocks. So you've got all sorts of blocks. And then three, we're going to look at 12 leads, leads, and we're going to look at how to diagnose a ST elevation myocardial infarction. Cool. Now that we've set the boundaries, let's go into lecture one. So this is a ECG. Um, the first thing I need to say is that you don't read ECGs because there's no words. There's no words. As you can see, there are no words in this. There's no ABC, but there is PQRST. So let me explain these blocks. There's one, two, three, four, five, five tiny little blocks. And each little tiny little block is 0 0.04 seconds. That means that three tiny little blocks is 0 0.12 seconds. That's pretty much all that's really important for now. How high the amplitude is not important right now. So if we look at this, this might be a lot to take in right now. But what this is explaining is one little block is one millimeter so one millimeter, one millimeter, one millimeter, one millimeter, one millimeter. So we have five millimeters. But as you can see here, one millimeter is equal to 0 0.04 seconds. That's all that's. The other thing you can remember if you want to is that the speed of the paper should be 25 millimeters per second. That's a faster prints. So if it prints faster or prints slower, obviously the graph will look different. 25 is probably a good number to remember. So let's jump into a ECG. So what do you see here? You see lines that go up and down, all right? When I say down, the reason I say down is that you need to find a flat line. You see here, I just drew a flat line. This line that we're looking at is called the isoelectrical line or the, the iso, it's, it's neutral. It's where nothing is happening. This is important because that's where the heart is standing still. So if you see a wave go up like that, it's gone up above the isoelectric line. And when we see a wave like that, it's because the wave has gone below the isoelectric line. That's important. Get rid of all that mess. So what is important to know as someone who doesn't know anything about ECGs and they want to learn to read ECGs? This wave is called the P wave. Then you have this big segment over here. The first negative wave is the, the QRS. So you have your P, you have your QRS, and then you have your T wave. So these represent phases of the heart. So let's quickly draw a heart. So this is my most basic way of drawing a heart. I know that looks like, I have no idea. So this is obviously the right side of the heart and the left side because it's opposite. And we have the atria, which are the small parts of the heart. And we have the ventricles, which are the big parts of the heart. I don't know how much you know about the heart, but this is just basic anatomy. So the um, blood comes into the right side of the heart and gets pumped to the lungs. And then it comes back into the left side of the heart and then gets pumped into the rest of the body. So up here, we have something called the sinoatrial node. This is the first node. This is known as the pacemaker of the heart. All right. This shoots conduction through the small ventri sorry, through the small atria, and that causes the atria to contract. Then it gets bundled up all over here, and then it gets shot super fast all the way through your ventricles, and it causes a massive contraction. Your ventricles are much bigger walls, so these are big walls, and your left ventricle has the biggest wall because it has to pump blood to the whole body. Very important. So remember, whole body. Why this is important is, is, that, the, is that the SA node in the ECG represents the P wave. Why did I just write the R? My goodness, the P wave. Then we have your ventricles contract. So when the ventricles contract, we then have your QRS. So we have your Q, well, I can't write. QRS is your ventricle. And then you'll say, yeah, but now there's a T wave. Remember this PQRST? 
the T wave is just the heart getting ready to, to then contract again. We have a P wave, we have a QRS, and we have a T. So the P wave, this one, represents the atria contracting, so the small um, chambers of the heart contracting, and they then prime the big part of the heart, which is the ventricles, and then this big contraction is the ventricles contract, and then the T wave is the heart getting ready to pump again, or in other words, a um, repolarization for those who are interested in. Small contraction, priming the big ventricles, the ventricles contract, and then you have your T wave. So what's really important, let me just get rid of all that, is that now that we know what a normal ECG looks like, we need to know what an abnormal ECG looks like. So your P wave should take between three and five little tiny blocks, all right? So between the start and the end shouldn't be more than five little blocks, which it isn't. Because I mean, remember, one big box is five, blo is five small blocks, and therefore it is less than that. Then your QRS, which is your QRS, should not be more than three little blocks. So your QRS should be less than three tiny little blocks, which it is, look, one, two, three, less than three little tiny blocks. And then your T wave, the only rule really, is that, so if you look at your R wave and an R wave, <coughs> your T wave should be before or halfway between. So your T wave should be at least within halfway between your R, your R wave and your R wave. That's normal. So that is the normal way to work out what is normal. So your P wave must be three little blocks. Your QRS, sorry, what am I saying? Your, your P wave must be less than five little blocks. Your QRS must be less than three little blocks or at least three little blocks. And your T wave must be at least halfway between your R and your R, straightforward. So then you might be like, okay, so how do I work out how fast a rhythm is? So there's multiple ways. The first way you can do is that you find your R waves, which are these ones, and you count how many big blocks there are in between the R wave. So that's one big block, that's two big blocks, that's three big blocks, and that's four big blocks. So you take the number 300 and you divide that by one, two, three, four. Four. And the answer is, well, I can't work that out in my head right now. You gotta calculate them. But I can assume it's between like is less than 100. So it's a normal heart rate because normal is like 60 to 100. So that's about a normal rate. Or you can then print a 10 second strip and count the number of R waves. Obviously 10 seconds, you can then times it by 60. So R waves times, sorry, not by 60. R waves um, times, because you counted for 10 seconds, you can then times by six because there's 60 seconds in a minute. And that will also give you your heart rate. The other way, so let's say you present it with something like this. So this is a 12 lead. You might be like, okay, but how do I work out, you know, the heart rate? Like, what am I looking at? Well, you can pretty much just be like, okay, well, the heart rate is print printed right there. Don't make it so hard on yourself. The other thing to note that is super important for someone who's just learning to read these is that we are learning about one lead, all right? Just one lead. This that we're looking at is called lead two. So you might be like, well, what does that mean? All right, so there are multiple leads that look at the heart. What this means is that there are multiple viewpoints of the heart. So you have the heart, I can't draw. So you have the heart, but you have an eye. So let's say a viewpoint from like that side and from that side and from this side and from, from, from that side. And so each view is different, similar to when you stand on different sides of a mountain. The mountain looks different, but it's the same mountain. So this is important because you might look at a part of the heart and there's no, let's say, heart attack happening in that part of the heart. It doesn't mean there's no heart attack happening in a different part of the heart. This is important because one day you might be presented with a 12 lead. So we will be discussing 12 leads in the third part of this lecture. And you might be like, oh my gosh, I'm looking at so much information. How am I meant to understand what I'm looking at? Wow, it's all printed on there for you, right? You'll see here that this is lead one. You see, it says lead one, lead two, lead three. So that is lead two. So you can go, oh wow, look at that. I can ignore all of this right now. And I will be like, yeah, that's true. But then you might be like, well, why do we use lead two? 
Lead two is just the most familiar, the most common. It's like if you see a mountain a million times from the same view and then you see it from a different view, you're not gonna find it um, as familiar because you haven't seen it like that. And so lead two was chosen. The other reasons obviously is like your P waves are you know normally this way and your QRS is normally this way and your T waves are normally that way. And so it's, it's just kind of like the standard. And so what they even did, if you haven't noticed yet, is that right at the bottom, if you can see it, there's a lead two and it's the whole lead. Because if you look here, we have lead two, then we have AVF and we have lead three and we have lead six. And that's stuff that we will be discussing in the third part of this. But what's important to see is that lead two is actually printed all the way along because you know what? Lead two is the easiest to read. So we can thank all the geniuses because they were like, you know what? Let me help you. That is pretty much all that needs to happen. The other thing that we can discuss, the other thing which would probably be important is that you can assess how fast a rhythm is, all right? So either you have a fast rhythm or a slow rhythm. Normal is between 60 and 100. So if it is less than 60, you have a slow rhythm. And if it's faster than 100, you have a fast rhythm. This can be worked out, remember, by counting the big blocks. And then, so you then take 300 and you divide it by the big blocks, or you can just look on the monitor and the monitor will tell you how fast it is. Or you print a six second strip and you times it by 10, whatever. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please hit like and subscribe. Part two will be about um, heart blocks and slower rhythms and maybe even some fast rhythms. And then part three will be about how to diagnose a 12 lead ECG and how to diagnose a STEMI. So that's a ST elevation myocardial infarction or just a normal heart attack. See you in the next part.